Okay, hello, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. I got a, a tap and die set here. And I pulled out a tap for a die. It's a 516 NC18 threads. And basically that's what these toilet bolts are. They're brass. They make them out of brass in order to keep corrosion and stuff on the back of the toilet for keeping the lid on. But anyway, I've had these all shorted out. Played with them a little bit. I've chased those threads over there already. Get this off here. There's a lot of stuff on there. Well, gonna have to do these by hand. And you ain't gotta worry about metal, uh, anything metal. It's brass, so the magnets aren't gonna get the filings. So that's another good plus. It should start getting a little hard here in just a few seconds where all that stuff is caked up. And I'm going to show you. <clears throat> that's nothing but fiberglass resin and all that good stuff. Here we go. A little bit of alcohol. You notice a blue spot on the rotor. Where I made the mark on the 12th magnet up there. Yeah, much easier. Acts as a lubricant and it keeps this stuff from re-sticking back in, into the threads. Let's back it off a little bit, clean it up. Well, it got a lot easier to turn. Chasing your threads gets pretty much just carves it and uh, takes everything completely off. It's good to clean your threads, keep on going back and forth. Really don't need the wrench unless you got it on there as thick as I did. Found a couple spots I had to use the wrench. Just your strength in your fingers is good enough not to uh, really mess things up because this is only in fiberglass inside here and there's a connection. We really don't want to move this. Uh, it's basically cleaning up pretty nice there. Let's back it off, put some more alcohol on it. There we go. All well nice and lubed. Starts cranking right on down. Get all them threads wet. Very nice lubricant and it doesn't rust your tool. And it doesn't put oils on everything. It's got its own oils, but basically it's got so much alcohol and the oils are so thin they just kind of evaporate with the alcohol. I should have done this before I put it on the, on the wind turbine, while it was still just a stator. But anyway, we know all this stuff is not gummy. It's nice and dry. You can hear it cracking. See, that little bit of alcohol makes a lot of difference. There we go. We chased that one all the way down to the bottom. I'm going to chase these other ones off camera. It spins nice. Look at all that junk. Yeah. And there we go. Just kind of jitter down. I poke a pinhole in the aluminum foil on the top. Saves on a lot of the uh, alcohol, plus uh, makes it easier to load my alcohol gasification cook stove when I get the hungries down here. There we go. Clean it up one more time. We ought to be just fine. Sweet. That's a good connection now. Okay. Well, I've got all these cleaned, and I've got some wire wrapped around this. Just some small, thin stuff. And if it pops, it'll let me know how much that wire can take anyway. <laughs> but anyway, we got these all connected up here nice, and I'll show you my other connections here. Okay, you remember when I painted the stator. Uh, we used to use that aluminum foil tape with the aluminum on the inside so that it didn't stick and just made these little sleeves and pinched them shut. Well, I found out a real good use for them. Yep, just poke your leads right through them. It's going to hit some aluminum all the way through on the, all the layers. So my pin's going from where my thumbnail is all the way straight back through. Oh, these work real nice. Anyway, there we go. Nice quick connectors for testing. Well, I was hoping for some better lighting, but uh, anyway, I've got it rigged up. It's uh, a little bit of a trade-off for working at night. You remember this tool that we put all the lug nuts on and run them all the way down. So I've got that set up. Put that right there. You can only be cranking to the right. I want it on the farthest lug. And I got the tapered side in. Takes care of all the slop in it. Still moves like that. There we go. Let's uh, kick. We got this set in amps. It is turned off. There we go. I'm just going to let the weight of my arm do this. and Turn it just a little more here. Yep. 3.65 I think it said. 4.8 that time. I might have been helping it. Not. Kind of hard to tell if you're using the full weight of your arm. All right, let's see here. Well, anyway, I'm looking at 4.4 on the highest one. Let's give it a good crank. There's 11, 11 amps. 12 something. But anyway, it really doesn't take much. Just kind of drop my arm down with a little bit of pressure. It's giving me 8 amps. And that's AC across basically one set of coils. 
So anyway, when the wind's blowing real hard, you're finally up to the RPM where it meets your battery voltage. Whatever pressure's left over turns, tries to go higher in voltage, but the battery draws the amps, and the amount of amps is how much pressure I'm putting on this. Okay, it was backed off on the camera a little bit. If I press down, I got eight amps with just that much pressure and only that much leverage. That prop is going to be ten foot, actually five foot blades. Twice of that, go one on one side and one on the other side, well maybe it'll be three, but it's going to have some decent torque because of the length of that blade. Now we notice as soon as I unplug this, it spins around real free. We uh, designed this for 120 RPMs. That prop in a nice low wind is going to be doing 120 RPM and it's going to be a cut in speed and it's going to have its lift and everything. It's not going to be installed. It's going to be ready and as soon as the wind blows any extra pressure amounting to that right there is going to put six amps into my battery. This is a very efficient alternator. In other words, it's going to spin freely until the RPMs of this alternator reach what the voltage is in the battery. At that RPM, any more RPMs tries to make the voltage go higher, but the battery's tying it down, and that's when it's drawn amps. So the extra pressure, if I spin this like this, I can't put much pressure on it because there's no amps being drawn on it. As soon as I put amps to it, and spin it around, touch it, it stops. That's only one of the coils, by the way. So anyway, so pressing it like this, if I put about this much torque, I can keep about 7 to 8 amps. Let's short it out. This is not voltage. You're not talking about power. But the pressure right here is what turns the amps. The RPM is your voltage. You're getting your prop set to your alternator is critical. That is not matched for the uh, battery voltage and the RPM that that thing is going to turn in a low wind. The longer prop turns slower, but it has a bigger area of collection, a windswept area. If I put a small prop, it'd get the battery voltage easy. If it'll turn it, which it probably will, but as soon as you try drawing amps off, it doesn't have the, the leverage kind of torque to put amps into the battery. You're not going to get much out of it. Anyway, there we go. Any extra pressure towards raising the RPM that the wind puts on the prop is what turns into amps once the RPM has reached the battery voltage. Okay, one more time with just my arm falling down here. We'll let you see the readings. 12, 13, almost 14. Yeah, about 14. Just giving it a good crank. 14 amps. No problem. That's one coil. Okay, I keep saying uh, one set of coils, but basically it's two sets of coils because it's in star. Number one, here's one thing I want to show you. I'm going to set this over here and let the weight of this do the work. Watch it. Go slow. Then it's going to speed up here, and then it goes slow, then it speeds up, slow, speeds up, goes slow. And when I turn this like this, because only the power is only taken from two of the connections, you're seeing that it, it's kind of shaking. That's where it gets easy, and then it gets hard again. This is 12 magnet positions. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I can feel them. You can actually see it. I can go even slower. Six of these magnets are south. Six of these magnets are north. What's that got to do with anything? Okay, well I got one coil right here, one coil right here. These are even. I've got two magnets right here, north and a south, and I got the coil right here. This magnet is leaving this phase, and it's a south magnet. This magnet is entering this phase, and it's a north magnet. Now you're not generating anything when your magnet is dead center of the coil. It's at maximum flux. You only generate when the flux changes. South magnet, probably pulling the magnetic flux through the coil, but see it's leaving the coil. So if we call this negative flow of flux coming to this magnet, we're saying that this negative flux is decreasing. That's okay because let's say this is the third phase right here, which is this coil. This is the finish. It's going through this set backwards around all the way over here to the start of the third phase and then it's shorted out and it's going to come back through the first phase which is this one going in this direction which this 
magnet is increasing in north flux or the positive flux. So that means both, both sets of these coils, the current is going around in the right direction, but it's wired so it goes in here and comes out here and then goes in here and comes out here. So I've got two sets of magnets and two sets of coils generating at the same time. And because it's terminated over here, they call these in series. So at 60 RPMs, uh, we're showing six volts. That means there's three volts on this set of coils and three volts on this set of coils and they're put in series. And some cool things to know on the numbers. Well, we got 12 magnet positions. And when I turn this around, I'm getting 12, uh, 12 pulses, six negative pulses, and six positive pulses or parts of the sine wave. So every two pulses is one full cycle, a positive and a negative. So the cool thing about the math here, at 60 RPM, that's one rotation per second. That means I've got six cycles per second. Now we know the frequency. At 120 RPM, we're getting 12 volts or 14 volts, we'll call it 12 volts, but then we're getting 12 cycles. So that's pretty cool. 12 cycles per second at 120 RPM. Now let's say uh, we went up to 600 RPM. If we're getting uh, 6 volts at 6 cycles per second, which is 60 RPM, then 600 RPM will give us what? 60 volts at 60 cycles. Very easy to figure. It makes the math on this uh, quite easy. I thought you'd enjoy knowing that. But anyway, so... If this will be three phase power, you'll have three full phases all doing 60 cycles at 600 RPMs with 60 volts. <laughs> I'm Scott Brown, Green Wind and Other Home Energies, and many good things to you and yours.